G'day guys, so what we have here is the toilet area and what we're going to be doing is whacking this off the wall and putting on a single switch that's got an illuminated module around the switch mech itself. So I'll show you guys how to wire that in and what it looks like as well because they're pretty cool. Especially at night when you bloody go to the toilet and can't see where the light switch is. Hey, um, make sure you guys subscribe to my videos. Appreciate it. Really appreciate it. Hopefully it won't be too echoey in here. I know it is a small room. First thing you want to do, make sure the light switch is dead. Go to the switchboard, turn the mains off. Simple as that. And then test with the switch. Make sure the light's not turning on anymore. So what I have here is the single switch we're changing it for plus the illuminated module that goes in behind it. This is what it comes with. This wee thing here has got four blue LEDs in it and the mech sits in there. And then this clear plastic bit sits in front of the mech. I'll throw down the product codes in the description if you guys are interested in getting these ones for your place. Sweet as, I'll show you the setup of one of these. So what you want to do, open your single gang switch. This is Legrand by the way. If you're wondering what brand it is, get these screws out of here, don't need that plate. So if this mech here, we'll pop it out. Right, you'll see it's got four slotted parts in it. Now what you want to do is go for these smaller slotted parts, get your screwdriver in there, and then pop it out, and just push on it from the other side and she'll pop out. Now with these ones, You'll see this plastic white ring around the front of the switch. You can then pull that out and replace it with this clear and white plastic one. Now there's two flat sides on here, so these two flat sides go to the side of the mech. So now we can put it back in this plate. This side's down. The side with writing on it, on these Legrand ones. Not that it matters yet, but when you put the switch on the wall it will matter. Clip it back in. And you'll see this small circle of clear plastic, and that will be what illuminates it. You won't see it when the cover's on. You'll just see white. But this white bit will be lit up blue. So next part, get the illuminated module. You might have to screw this middle screw in a wee bit, just to get it on there. Oh yeah, I might have to screw the number one in a wee bit as well. So, just like that. Now, one end of this illuminated module is going to go with your neutrals. And then your other end, depending on how you want the switch to operate, or how you want the light to come on, when you want this to turn on, will go in a different place for each one. So if you want it on all the time, you put it in the C with your feed cables from the switchboard, and then this blue ring will be on all the time. Now if you want it on when the switch is turned on, put it in the number one terminal with the red cable that goes out to the light fitting. And if you want it on when the light switch is turned off, how I'll be wiring it, is you want to put it in the two and it will be the only cable in the two. So I'll show you how it's done. Right, obviously smash these dots out as usual and then whip the screws out. Wait as, same as usual. Bloody watch out that the painters haven't painted it on. So get a sharp edge screwdriver in there and just scratch it along the edges or, or a Stanley blade. Now see that's starting to lift the wallpaper. Being painted well in there this one. What we've got in the back of this one, we've got two red cores twisted up into the C here, which are your feeds, and one red core twisted into the one, and then we've got some black cores here twisted into the loop. Now that loop terminal is just like a connector, it is not part of the switch. So what I'm going to do is take the black ones out and put them in the connector themselves, and then as the earth is here I believe, oh look at that, that's not even good. So. What I'll do is I'll cut this back a wee bit and just put a connector on the end there. Don't know why, but someone's throwing solder on these too. Uh, that flush box in there is going to come out as well. It's an old metal one. So I'll be ripping that out first. We'll get rid of the switch. Just like that. 
Before touching these, you might want to get a non-contact voltage tester out. This one's on that wee LED there, which would light up red, like that, if there's power on it. Now these are terminated fine. There's no um, damage on them that I can see. I'm just going to trim it back a wee bit. Anyway, let's rip this flush box out. I might cut some of this wallpaper back, because it's kind of annoying. And we'll probably end up getting snagged on the thing when I'm pulling it out of the wall. Alright, next thing. Get your sides in there on a nice angle, squeeze them together and then leverage these nails out bit by bit. I think this box I'm just going to leave inside the wall. It's much easier to do that and pull it out. So I'll remove the cables from the box, push the box down the wall there and then I'll put a new flush plastic flush box in here. This is one of the new plastic ones. Fire it in here. Fire these screws in. Sweet as. Right. So what I'm going to do with these earths first, as they're twisted up, they've got solder on them. I don't know why you bother. Put a bit of heat shrink over it. There was sleeving on it, which is perfectly fine to leave on. But because I've got some on hand, I'm just going to throw it on there anyway. And then throw a connector on the end. Burn it down a wee bit. Careful not to bloody burn the walls or any of that rubbish. Then throw a connector on the end. Definitely if you come across them and they haven't got any sleeving on them, you need to put some insulation over them. Alrighty, just like that. So it's a wee bit darker in here now. I have got my torch on, just to broaden the place up a bit, because obviously the power's turned off. Rightio. So what I'm going to do is strip the end off this a wee bit more so I can twist it up with these neutrals. Put it with the black cables. Twist it in there, cut the excess off. Then you can either put it in a connector, which is what I like to do because I've got tons of them, or you can throw it in the loop terminal on the back of the mech here. If you don't have a connector handy, you can put it in that loop terminal there. So that's the neutrals done. Now, with this end of the cable, what I'll be doing is putting it in the number two because I want this blue LED ring to operate when the light switch is turned off. So in other words, when it's dark at night, and I want to see where the switch is on the wall, it will be illuminated so I can just whack it. And yeah, number two's blanked out, get a screwdriver in there and open up the plastic. Do the old pull test, make sure it's not going to fall out. Right, these last ones, same as usual, the commons, or the feeds, go and see, and the switch wire going to the light goes into number one on the back here. So I'll throw them in there, then that we illuminate around so it's square. Then we'll put the light switch back. Flush box screws. Screw them into the threads on the top and bottom of the flush box. Make sure you get your level out and make it sure it's level if you don't have a reference point. I'm referencing it off the edge of this. So I look at it on this angle and make sure it's lined up to make sure the top and bottom appear at the same time when this edge touches them. Don't over tighten these because it does dig into the paintwork. Throw your plate on. We'll go and live in the circuit and test it. Alrighty, nice. So that's what it looks like. As it gets darker, you'll see the ring lights up a bit more. As soon as I turn the light on, that blue ring turns off. Turn it off and it's back on again. And that's basically it.